live from New York, it's Ask This Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to Ask an Engineer. It's our weekly show we do every Wednesday here at Adafruit. It's me, Lady Ada, the engineer. With me is Mr. Lady Ada. Got an exciting show for you tonight. We're here at the Adafruit factory in downtown Manhattan where we do all the design, testing, shipping, manufacturing, kitting, electronics, soldering, debugging, more debugging. Why isn't this Windows 7 driver working debugging? That's right. But uh, we're having a good time right now. We're hanging out. We're going to do this exciting show for an hour. Yeah. What's on tonight's show? On tonight's show, the code is walkthrough. 10% off in the Adafruit store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Everything except for Ada Box and gift certificates. It supports us, an open source hardware company. We make electronics in New York. Made in USA. Manufacturing in USA. Yay. I don't have any loans, no venture capital. I'm going to try to keep it that way as long as possible. Nothing against the VCs and the banks, but it's more fun to give you discounts and do all this cool stuff like puppet shows and shows. Show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady Ada will talk about the projects and more. Pack of mailbags and stop by letters from you to us. Time travel, look back in the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, pioneers, world events, and more. Some manufacturing footage from the Adafruit factory. 3D printing, new products, we'll answer your questions, we'll have a trivia question, all that and more on, you guessed it, Ask an Engineer. Woot. Okay, well, as I said, codes walk through, don't forget. Mm. Yep. Um, programming note, this is Ask an Engineer, every Wednesday at 8 p.m. It's on youtube.com slash Adafruit slash live. Show and tell, every Wednesday night at 7.30. You can look for the blog post, or you can also show up at Discord, but it's on Google+. Plus. We just did that, yeah. For shipping in New York City, if you check out before 11 a.m., they're same day. It depends on zip code, but if you're in parts of Manhattan, you get same day shipping. Speaking of shipping, $200 more UPS ground, yay. Um, everywhere in the U.S. Ex uh, that's continental. We also have DHL shipping internationally, and we have the following places. Canada, UK, Germany, France, Belgium, Ireland, Italy, Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, that it's a lot of the EU. Is prepaid customs. It says sales right through. It's one of uh, the really exciting options. And that being said, um, I'll say this because we um, are doing really good with DHL, UPS noticed and we're like, hey, do you want better rates for international? Yeah. So, so we now might. You have we two might. More better yeah, and we just do pass through shipping. So it, there, there'll probably even be better rates yep. for international for UPS. Yeah, the whatever Yay. rates we get, it's actually whatever we show on the site. Like they're exactly the same rates from UPS. So yeah. So it's working out. If they give us better rates, they'll appear immediately. It's working out. So it, it was good because what, by adding more choices for our customers, the carriers notice and they're like, hey, we, you know, we can, we hey, can, I'm like pretty we, cute can yeah. we can do Aww. some, we can do some discounts for y'all. Yeah. So, so that's yeah, going on. Good for us. Good for you. Good for everyone. Yep. Okay. Uh, next up, show and tell Lady Ada, people around the world showing and sharing their projects. Um, this is a, another, you know, it's, it's a debate in my head. Should we do show and tell longer than a half an hour? Cause I think that's all I want to do. But the half an hour is nice because it's, it, you can always come back and everything. We get a bunch of different projects, and um, but the, it's such a special. It's charming. It's such a special half an hour. Yeah. So this week, what was on the show and tell? We had so many people on the show and tell, really wonderful people. JP finished his CNC build. He worked on it for 16 hours. He has a video he's going to edit and release about it. Uh, he showed it off. It's a pretty big CNC build. He has cut some wood, some high density polyethylene, and. Uh, it's a good time. CNC is a good time. So he's going to be making some cool CNC projects soon. Tune in on Desk of JP for more of that info. No and Pedro, they uh, survived Irma. They were in Southeast uh, America, but they are doing good. They did a lot of preparation and uh, didn't have a lot of disruption in service. Um, so they had a time-lapse project, uh, pumpkin with eyes, with LEDs that they modified. And they also showed off last week's projects that they couldn't show up because they were doing hurricane prep, the Nintendo dock with projector. Uh, and then they also kind of had some fun designing a Pi Zero button board using our 8 millimeter squishy buttons. So that's kind of nice. They were using the, the other mill slash Bantam tools mill. And they said, it's really fun to learn how to do PCB layout when you can mill out the PCB within 10 minutes and actually test it. It makes a big difference. Yeah, I have somewhat breaking news. Uh, breaking news. Danielle, beep, the, beep, beep, the CEO beep, beep. of Bantam, formerly Other Mill, uh, she's doing an interview with us. Oh. So I sent over some questions, or sorry, I'm about to send over questions. So I think this is like the first, one of the first interviews uh, post Other Mill yeah. that's going to be out there. So yay. Yay. Okay, cool. Uh, Dan Halbert um, came by. Uh, a little bit of an announcement. You know, there's Circuit Python 2.0, which is really great. And 
And uh, he showed off the project that got him interested in Circuit Python and MicroPython, which is making an uh, HID a keyboard box for his friend who has cerebral cerebral palsy and cannot. Uh, I think he likes to do like video editing and can't use his hands, so he made him a box with an LCD in different modes, so he can uh, create his own interface for controlling his software on the computer. Um, for the stuff he wants to do to be creative, but he doesn't have to use his hands anymore. He can use his feet because his feet are doing pretty good. Um, so he's shut off the box, and uh, it's cool because he's actually uh, Dan Hubbard worked really hard on getting HID support, which is like amazing. He did such a good job with that, and part of the reason of that is is to build this project. So um, a really wonderful project. Tony D shut off an altimeter with feather. Uh, he climbed a mountain and he got it. Uh, the altimeter worked up to 10,000 feet, so that's kind of nice. And he's going to maybe port that to um, Circuit Python. Uh, then we had a bunch of people show up. Adam, uh, normally working on a scanning electron microscope at home, is now working on scanning electron home uh, microscopes away from home. He's at Maine University with Stephanie, and they're working together to um, image some ice to do glacier analysis, which we'll probably really need because the glaciers are coming for us. Uh, so it's really cool. So they've got like a, you know, instead of just like trying to get the scanning electron microscope working, now they're hacking it to make it work on very cold things that don't melt. So it's kind of neat. Um, Scott is in his crawl space under his house. He's got a Feather RFM 69 radio with a DHT22 humidity temperature sensor. And he's connecting it to a computer to control the fan in his crawl space so that he can cool off his basement or heat up his basement. So that's a, that's a perfect project, home automation. Uh, Dan C. Uh, came back and told, told us his mess with Rust, which is the AdaBox 4 project he did to uh, really annoy his boss. Uh, worked out really well. His boss didn't fire him, so he's still employed. Everyone thought it was funny. It was a, it was a box that just said, hey, Russ, like randomly every 10 minutes. <laughs> so, and he hid it in the cubicle. So. Yeah. And so, his, uh, so Neil just yeah, got Neil, the AdaBox. He got AdaBox 5, and he built it, and he's having a really good time with the Raspberry Pi. He's playing the free games that we put on the image, but then they're going to play Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. And then I, I gave him a hint that it's possible to play Minecraft on a Raspberry Pi, and he got really excited. Yeah. So, good. Yeah, I also got to deliver a special me- a special message. So when we made Adabox, the idea was it would be given as gifts uh, for beginners. This is the first time they're going to use electronics. It's standalone. It all works. So let me just mention this, and the community can help. If you have like 50 Raspberry Pi Zeros because you've been collecting them and you're like a Linux kernel expert and like that's your thing and maybe Adabox isn't for you. If you're if you're a cranky guy that has all this stuff already and you're an expert, this might not be for you. Yeah. It, it's for kids and for uh, it's the first experience. It, it's not I've done I've rode every single ride I want to have the, the another roller coaster. Yeah, this isn't going to be all unique never seen before boards it's going to be really good full experiences yeah there's always surprises in it but i have to manage expectations because i think um like in the uk a lot of people had raspberry pis and they got the free one with magpie um uk got saturated with raspberry pis so pi maroni has one of our ada boxes yeah and you know there's like a couple cranky people there's just like always two cranky, cranky people, people and it's like hey like you know even in your like twitter profile it's like i'm a cranky expert at Linux Pi stuff. Like but you know what? It's a good opportunity to give the Adabox 5 as a gift. Yeah. So that because it's, it's, the whole point is that it's complete. You don't need anything other than what's yeah, in the Yeah, so box. that's what it's meant for. So it was really nice to talk to a young person, a kid, and how delightful it is. Like, this is so much fun. This is the first time. And I have to say, like, if, if you got a Raspberry Pi and you didn't have this, like, standalone thing, it's a little tough. To get no, started. you an image ready to go, a yeah. SD card, a burner, like you get yeah, he got everything. His, he got his AdaBox 5 today and was playing games today. He's, he's like Sonic. He's like, he I said played, he's always wanted to play Sonic. I played Sonic the Hedgehog, and that's so cool because it's, it's. I remember being maybe that age playing Sonic the Hedgehog. It's always cool and always new. No, so, it's 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 retro. Anyways, so yes. maybe the community can help out when people are like, uh, oh, like I have a Raspberry Pi. It's like, well, like, you yeah. know, most five-year-olds don't. This is why we have the store with everything in it, if you want specific things. Yeah. But to, to make a gift box, it's yeah. actually, it, it's, by the way, I want to, just because we're chatting here and this is, a, this is my show, it's actually quite hard and interesting to develop a pack that teaches people and gets them interested in electronics that is complete and yet doesn't duplicate anything from the previous boxes. Yeah. This is a different challenge than I've ever had before. Yeah, we, we're playing the video game on the hardest level possible. And the result is young people are learning electronics, standalone. This is everything that they need. So it's different than the experts that have a collection of all this stuff. 
and for their job they're like you know linux experts have 50 pies on their desk yeah so. anyway anyhow so but neil had a really good thank time. you neil thanks that neil. was for you yay i'm so glad and it's actually true. People do tell us, hey, my, I, we get a lot of photos of ki- parents and their kids. Because it's a good project. They can work together. And again, they have everything. Uh, Phil M. Uh, also built an altimeter. But this time, uh, it's with an M0 Feather and an OLED. And it's a flight controller for a rocket. And it's going to go up 1.3 kilometers. And he said he wants his rocket to survive. He's into space survival, which is kind of uh, which is kind of cool. I like that. Uh, everyone, he has a SpaceX shirt, and SpaceX, the whole thing is like, the rockets don't get destroyed afterwards. Roberto is working on his OpenSCAD Jenkins script to test out his OpenSCAD designs and make sure that they work. Uh, he's making like custom tags for like wires and cables and events and stuff, so that's kind of neat. And then uh, Z-Bones, which is an awesome name, Z-Bones, uh, you can tell that Halloween is his favorite I mean, there's no question. I want to hang out with Z-Bones. I'm Z-Bones just like, is just like, like, that's where I want finally, to live. It's no, September. He, he made this, the background was, it was black, it was black drapery, and so he had these beautiful pumpkins, pumpkins with the LED eyes, and the LCDs. Sound effects. EL wire stitching the Stitching, pumpkin. and you can tell that Z-Bones is like, wants to work on Halloween projects year-round, but it isn't socially acceptable no, to really is. start until it's September 1st. But the moment September 1st kicks off. H- hang on in the Adafruit world. Halloween's all year. Z bones. Yeah. Okay. So lots of cool pumpkins. That That's all? it. That's all we had. I don't think I missed anyone. All oh, participants on the show and tell get as seen on the show and tell sticker unless uh, something else comes up unless something, something else different. This is part of our different live series. Yay! We do live videos all the time. So we're on Discord, as a lot of folks know. So adafruit.it slash Discord. And we have like a thousand people already, right? Almost up to a couple thousand. So wow. that's where all the chats for all the videos. And as someone said, it is the 24 7 hacker maker space that you can bring your granddaughter to yeah woo so um a few things that we're doing in the show and tell and maybe even project help we started giving away the sparky pin um there's so many contests online right now that's like show the ma- most amazing thing ever so a lot of people have told us they get really intimidated about sharing their projects so we said oh let's go the other way and if you just like show your wonderful mistakes that you learned from or like a project that didn't work out no problem just tag it pound sparky um, we're going through each week now and sending out Sparky pins. Yeah. Okay. Um, other news inside Discord. Um, I'm going to try to do a screencast. I wanted to do a learning guide, but um, if you join Discord and you're going to an event where Adafruit's at, you can get added to the event room. We don't want to put everybody in those event rooms because if they're not at the event, like whatever. So um, if you go to the Discord chat, go to the events channel and um, ask one of the friendly helpers, hey, can you add me to Seattle Maker Fair? That's coming up. Can you add me to Maker Fair in New York? That's coming up. And we're also a sponsor of Open Hardware Summit. That's coming up. So just go to the event. Yeah, go to the event channel in Discord. Ask to be added to one of those. They'll add you. Then you're there. So then you can meet up there. Okay. And chat with each other yeah. and give, you know, hints on where to get breakfast or yeah, so that's, that's coming up. Yeah, this weekend is Seattle Maker Fair. So I started to do a guide and I'm just like, oh, like I'm going to have to do all these screenshots. And I started to, I'm like, this is a screencast. What am I thinking? So I'm going to try to do a screencast before the week. Okay. Um, but anyways, if you're in the uh, events channel or Discord, help people um, figure out what they have to do to get into the, the rooms. But basically, you just ask them out and they'll add you. Okay. Um, also, we did some other stuff. Uh, we did a little video for, um, and I'll zoom in on this a little bit. Uh, this was a Cocktails Coding and Creating. Uh, tinker with the trendiest tech equipment in the company of 50 successful women and learn how engaging and empowering creating technology can be. So you were a guest speaker at this event, but it was in Australia. So that was a little hard to swing. Can't fly there. Yeah, so what we said is, hey, send us some questions and Lady Ada will do a factory tour and talk about some of this stuff. So this is mostly meant for young girls that are thinking about a career in technology. You answer these questions, a four minute video, and I'm like, oh, we should just share it with everybody. So that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, yeah so and let's I had do like it. makeup and stuff on. Yeah, we just got finished doing a photo shoot. Yeah. Um, we have a photo shoot, you guys are gonna freak. It's amazing, awesome. it's amazing. But um, I took advantage of it to be like, hey, I don't wanna like, you know, clean up, so. Yeah, I had full makeup on, but I was behind the camera so you can see me. Well, you're always wearing makeup. Yes, this is. I'm actually not going gray. I dye this every day. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's true. All right, take it away. Me. Hello, Hi. everybody. It's me, Lady Ada, here at Adafruit. I'm the founder and lead engineer here, and I designed this circuit playground that you've got. I designed it so you can learn how to code, build cool stuff, and just have fun. Sally emailed me a couple questions, and I thought I'd answer them while here at the factory. How I got my start? 
Well, I actually started as a computer scientist. I love to code, and I wanted to build a synthesizer. This is a musical instrument called the TB303 that was discontinued. And I made a couple of kits of these, and people really liked them, so much so that I decided to start my own business and teach other people how to design, write code, and make electronics. What inspires the work that I do? Well, I'm really inspired and take a lot of my ideas from what's going on in the community. I look at how people are building projects or what they want to build, whether it's costuming or 3D printing, robotics or fashion or sports. And I think, well, what can I build that'll make those projects more fun or easier for people? So that's how I get my inspiration. What is open source hardware? Well, Open source hardware is related to open source software, where for the software that you run on your phone, tablet, or computer, the source code, the stuff that makes it do what it does, is available for you to read and understand and make yourself. You can even remix it however you like. Hardware is similar. So for example, this Gemma design, this is another wearable similar to the Circuit Playground. You can design and make your own because all the computer files and design files are available online for free for you to remix and learn from. How has Adafruit and my journey evolved? Well, one of the really cool things about running your own company is you get to kind of decide what you do. So every day is a little bit different for me, but I work on a lot of different projects and projects that I find personally interesting, like puppet shows or show and tells or, or making synthesizers or cell phone jammers. So whatever I feel would be best for the community, I get to decide to do those things. What is the role that Adafruit can play in the lives of young people around the world? Well, first up, everything that we do is online for free. So if you're all interested in electronics or you want to build your own stuff, check out some of our learning guides. You might be really inspired. What's in store for the future of Adafruit? Well, we're going to see more and more internet connected devices and sensors. The internet of things is what everyone's going to build. And also we're working on making it even easier for people who have no electronics experience or STEM experience to get their you know, feet wet in electronics and build something cool and fun for themselves. Well, one of the cool things about being an engineer and doing STEM stuff, you can use a lot of these new technologies like 3D printing to make a customized prosthetic hand. So the people who need prosthetic hands can have a custom fit that's perfect for them. And also, there's a lot of sensors that are coming onto the market, like air quality sensors or wind sensors or temperature sensors. So you can become your own meteorologist. You can measure your local town or even the globe and share that data with other people around the world. Do you need to be good at math to be a good coder? Not necessarily. Although math is very helpful when you're coding because math is just helpful in day-to-day -day life, a lot of coding is about taking existing software and making it fit together and also being empathic towards the user and designing the software to work well for them. So why would you be interested in pursuing a career in technology? Well, nowadays, no matter what your interest, whether it be fashion or biology or medicine or environmental science, all of these studies require technology. You're going to have to use coding and statistics and analysis and making for almost anything you're interested in. So if you are interested at all in other topics, having a coding or STEM background is going to help you get what you want to get done. So if you're a doctor, for example, you'll be able to debug and diagnose your own machinery. If you're a biologist, you're going to be able to write code to do DNA analysis. And if you're interested in environmental science, you're going to be able to run those models to understand how the earth climate is changing. So I would always suggest pursuing a STEM background and understanding code and the technology around us. Okay, so that's our tour. And it's also helpful because um, you get asked to do a lot of uh, speaking events and most of it's like travel for 8 to 20 hours. And that, then just do that. That doesn't count um, <laughs> all the things that happen when you travel. Hotel, yeah. sickness, lost yeah, luggage. Or, or an airline deciding to salt pa passengers. That's a thing now. You have to pay extra not to be assaulted. Assaults. So, um, Delays. Yeah, so the, the thing uh, is... I delayed. <laughs> yeah, and so the thing is, you know, the special thing about Adafruit and you is this company you built. So doing these video tours is really helpful. So we can get the questions. Um, we can do the tour. We even do live videos. So if, if you're thinking about emailing Adafruit, make sure you, you know that that's something we do. You can Google for um, West Point. Adafruit, mm -hmm. uh, you did a question and answer with West Point. We had the, we went to vi to visit before we liked that. It was a long time ago. Hard to get there again. It's a drive. Well, we well, also did um, a, you know O'Reilly conference. I yeah, remember. it's working out. Um, also, the, you know, since we're since we're a little chatty tonight, here here's the thing. So technology events in particular, 
sometimes there's pushback about using the internet for this. It's just like yeah, they had it. Yeah. They're just like they, there. There was a conference I swear about like high speed telecommunication, telecommunication, like and, tele- and remote learning. Yeah, right. And I'm like, hey, cool. We'll do a video we'll conference. A and they're thing. like, absolutely no. not. It's a private conference. We have to be able to touch and, you. And I'm like, well, yeah. And it's like, well, like, could we, we even breathe on you? Could we even videotape? And they're like, no. I'm just like, okay. And it just it's hard for us to say no sharing. Yeah. Anyways, okay. Next up. Totally lame. So that's what we do. Jump Park, Jump Park Workshop. Here is a trailer for the CNC unboxing. Big news, CircuitPython 2.0. Yep. Scott and Dan, the entire crew. What is new in CircuitPython 2.0? Okay, so we have released 2.00, which is pretty exciting. First off, we have uh, caught up with mainline. So I think it's MicroPython 1.92, which uh, one of the big changes is um, it adds support for multiple file systems. And you're like, why do I care about that? The reason you care about that is we often use the internal chip or an SPI chip for um, file system and you might want to add an SD card separately so now you can do that you can have like an SD card as well as internal you know file system uh, which is really useful if you want to write data to something so you want to like instead of just reading data from your file system because we don't let you write to the circuit Python file system um, for bus contention problems and um, but part of that is we have added a way um, in using boot.py that you can remount the file system as read only so you can use it as a data logger uh, so if you have like um, a Feather M0 Express or a, even a Gemma or a Trinket, you can now log data from the Gemma or Trinket into that little mini file system inside. And then um, you can use a switch, for example, for to tell their code whether you're going to read or write from it. And then you can get that data off. So it's actually kind of neat. One of the tough things to do with Arduino is like really good data logging. And um, we already have all that mass storage, you know, USB file system support done. So now you can use it for data storage too. Uh, we also added a couple things like non-volatile memory. So uh, a little piece of memory in um, the SAMD21 and, and friends, you can use as sort of EEPROM storage. So now we have that support uh, for the express boards. And we added CPU temperature for the SAMD series as well. We actually uh, 
I, I tested it out, and it turns out that the internal temperature sensor on the SAMD is really good. It's within a degree or two, um, much better than I expected. And so we thought we'd expose it because it kind of gives you a free temperature sensor that's pretty high quality. Uh, so you can use that, for example, if you want to do temperature logging, you don't need any extra components at all. You can just use the board as is. And uh, we also had a small update to part of 1.92 MicroPython. The um, MPY file format changed a little bit. So we do give you warning if you're importing the wrong version and we've regenerated our bundle for 2.0. So a little bit of a transition there, but we think it's worth it um, to keep up with mainline. Okay. So, so download it today. Wh whatever chat you're in, uh, Tanud is Scott's name, Dan, um, let's see, Philby, Tony D. Pretty much there's, it takes a village for CircuitPython. And also in Discord, we added CircuitPython helpers. Yeah. So we have people giving us real-time bug reports, tons of stuff. And so it's making it a really solid release. And we're already up to 2.00. It'll be CircuitPython X with face detection one day. Yeah. And the neural engine. Well, 3.0, we'll I'm that. really excited for 3.0. <laughs> 3.0 is when we're targeting to have the SAMD51 support. But unfortunately, it requires a pretty big rewrite yep. to support ASF4. But we would like to get there in the next we'll few months. But we're, we're working hard. But there'll yeah. be bug fixes in between if necessary. So okay. check that out. All right, mailbag. I'm packing. I read your letters. So we read these letters, the entire company, and uh, it's on our State of the Fruit meeting this week. This is from Chris. I'll go ahead and take this opportunity to say I love your company, all the hard work your team puts into such high-quality electronics and products out into the world. I've made a few first wearables with your NeoPixel rings and Gemmas for people, and they're always so happy with them. They love hearing that your company is based in the U.S. Also, for friends of myself been kicking around the idea of opening a hacker space in East Tennessee, so hopefully I'll be able to bulk order parts from you guys in the next year or so. Once again, thank you for all your hard work. Love the products. Yours is Nerdly Chris. Thank Thanks, Chris. you, Chris. Um, another reminder, um, you can call us and leave a message on Bitstab. That's our phone number. Save that for later, because that's how we do our trivia question. It's our phone. Our phone's off right now, though. But it goes voicemail, and you can leave a nice message. Phone. You can tell it's a phone, because it's a phone. Yep. Yeah. OK, time travel. Look back in the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, and more. First up, happy birthday, Curie, but it's not the Curie Whoa. you think. Different Curie. Yeah. Did you know that 1897, French chemist and physicist, Nobel Prize laureate, was born Irene Curie, daughter of Mary Curie and Pierre Curie, jointly with her husband, awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1935 for the discovery of artificial radioactivity. This made the Curies the family with the most Nobel laureates wow. to date. To date, both children of the Curies are esteemed scientists. So her kids were also pretty pretty good. So this is three yeah. generations of Nobel science. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, there's probably a lot of pressure. No, definitely. It's like, well, your grandfather has one. Your grandmother has yeah. one. Why don't you have one? You're probably not, like, living at home, like, hey, I'll get a job one day. You're probably like, when are you getting that Nobel Prize yet? So, yay. Okay. Next up, a little bit of a, a, a somber note, but also pretty positive. So 2011 is when the 9-11 uh, the Memorial Museum opened. Um, this week was 9-11, so 16 years ago. And one of the things I wanted to say is Adafruit and 9-11 um, are, are so closely tied together. Adafruit was started in the shadow of the Trade Center. So every single most of Adafruit was a block from where the Freedom Tower is now. In fact, as the Freedom Tower is getting built, we were taking photos. Or if you watched Old Ask and Engineers, you can see the Freedom Tower is yeah. being built. And, uh, you know, all of our thoughts go out to the, the families and friends who lost people. It's also a, a now a thriving place. So, you know, it's possible for, for, for people to come together and, and for something good to come out of something terrible. And I wanted to give folks just, like, here's what we saw for most of Adafruit. Um, it was always noisy, but that was okay. So this was what I saw every single day. This is from my shipping station. And yeah. you can see right where Freedom Tower started to poke up in front of one of the buildings. Yeah, this is they were building it. Yeah. And Slowly. this is when we did a photo shoot, and it got a little higher. So all parts of when we were at John Street, at Nassau Street, all parts, most of Adafruit was there. And we watched that area kind of really bounce back. Um, yeah, it was definitely a, a depressed area when yeah. we first moved in. That's why we had cheap rent. It, yeah, in early 2000s. And yeah. then no one wanted to live there. 
<laughs> no, it was you know there was a lot of construction. I mean, yeah. That's another thing. They were they were rebuilding a lot of it, and yeah, um, yeah the train station was completely being rebuilt. Yeah, and it was like five or six years ago. Uh, this yeah, this was yeah. like seven. So okay. Seven years ago. So next up, special treat for everybody. We have the latest women in hardware interview series, and we released a couple things. Um, check out our YouTube channel. But this one is uh, a walkthrough with Heather Carrick at Pier, 9. at Pier 9. And this is really cool. This is the coolest thing ever. They actually have a lot of really neat toys, and it's rare to people to get to see so many cool toys at once. I don't think there's been a tour like this. So this is with Autodesk. Um, shout out to our team, Jessica, John, Andrew, um, Adam from Hackster. Um, th this is one of our big efforts. There's not a lot of interview series, high profile women in their own companies that are out there. So this is one of the things we're doing. Um, if you know some somebody amazing at a, at a company that you think we should interview, let us know. Um, this is a walkthrough we're going to play. It's 10 minutes. It's worth every second. Check it out. If you like CNC unboxing, check back. Yeah. I think it's like a recruiting video. It's like, okay, you want to work there. It's a little bit. You want to work there. But it's cool stuff. You want to work there. She shows off the machines. Yeah. Hey, I'm Heather Carrick. I'm a senior research engineer at the Autodesk Applied Research Lab here at the Pier 9 Workshop. The workshop is one of our many technology centers around the world, and we've got some really cool machines and a lot of really great products going on inside, and I'd love to show you around. for computer numerically controlled, so every machine here has a computer and software attached to it that tells each part of the tool how to move, how fast to move, and where to go. Our largest piece of equipment here is our water jet. The water jet is basically like any other kind of 2D cutting tool, like you might be familiar with a laser cutter. It's very similar, but instead of using a laser, it uses a high-powered jet of water with garnet dust, which is the same stuff that's found on sandpaper, mixed in. So yeah, it can cut through up to a foot, a foot thick material, up to steel even. Uh, and it can cut brittle things like glass and marble. And it can cut things that might be unsafe to cut in, a, in something like a laser cutter like PVC because it won't release any toxic fumes. Another one of our large pieces of equipment is the DMS 5-axis mill. Uh, this mill we use to cut foam, wood, and it can do softer, softer metals like aluminum. Um, it's five axes, so we can do X, Y, Z, and then B and C, which are two different rotations. This allows us to cut kind of more complicated shapes, cool curvy things, um, undercuts, so cutting underneath something on this machine. It's used for furniture, it's often used for foam that can be used as a mold for something, um, such as filling it with resin, or for laying uh, things like carbon fiber. So one of the most commonly used pieces of equipment in this room is probably this three-axis mill. It's a Haas three-axis uh, CNC, and it can cut through all sorts of metals, but it's usually here, we usually use it for aluminum and steel. Um, so the way a mill works, it's a lot like the, the DMS that we showed before, but this one is used usually for smaller pieces of equipment um, and with, with harder steels than, the, than that big mill. Uh, so yeah, you can cut things like this, where you have uh, your spinning tool, they can go in these XYZ profiles and come through and cut through pockets. Uh, so yeah, we've got a table full of really cool examples of, of items that were made on this machine. So they're made, there we have steel, we have aluminum. Uh, and for, for a CNC, you might make your final item, but you might also make a tool that you need to make another object. So uh, injection molds are often made on a CNC mill out of aluminum. Uh, or other fixtures that you might need in order to, to do things like a part flip. You might need to make a piece of equipment on this mill in order to let you make this, this part finally. So those are really common uses for, for a, a piece of machinery like this. So if you want to take a closer look at what's going on in here, what's going on with this mill is we have a tool like this loaded into this tall vertical guy. And it spins really, really quickly. And this tool is really sharp. So it spins quickly and then starts plunging in and moving around. But uh, all of that white stuff is called coolant. So we have high speed steel usually or carbide uh, for our tool touching up against, against more steel or aluminum. 
and that can get to be really, really hot. And when things get hot, it will dull your tool, which will cause you problems. And it can also um, cause uh, the metal to warp and various things to break. The Matsura behind me is a five axis CNC mill. It can do everything the three axis mill we just looked at can do, plus a lot more. A great thing about five axis machines and mills in general is that you're not only making the final piece of equipment, but you might also be making a lot of really cool fixturing that never, never gets to see the light of day often. Um, one of my favorite examples is this D20 die that Lee, who's right behind me, made. So it's a 20-sided cage with a 20-sided die inside. And the way he made it, it started out as a piece of stock, a lot like this, just a blank piece of aluminum that he was able to clamp into the machine and machine away the top and the sides and even a little bit underneath of the die. In a 3-axis machine, that would have taken a lot of operations and a lot of part flips to be able to get to each of those pieces. So after just the first set of cuts, it looked a lot like this. But now, how do you cut away the rest of this? He needed a way to hold on to this die in the mill. So he had to come up with a fixture. So Lee designed and machined this fixture. So there's little key pieces that have little cutouts that fit inside the holes of the cages and that can lock, into, that can lock the die in place. And otherwise, it's got a rectangular base that can fit really nicely in a normal clamp. So when it was all clamped up, it looked like this. He was able to load that in the machine and finish off the last bit of operations to finish the die. Uh, so in the CNC room, we saw a CNC lathe and a CNC mill. These are sort of the, the parents of those. So we've got a manual lathe and a manual mill. So these do not have computers controlling them. It's really good for someone that wants to get into machining to start with a manual machine so they understand kind of what's going on before moving off to the CNC so you have a better understanding of what to tell the computer what to do. So this one's the mill. Um, so we've got our own version of those tool collets. So you can load your, your tool in here, put it in here, it'll spin really fast. And then you've got all of these knobs for moving the, the material left and right and up and down. Um, so it's, uh, you have to pay a lot more attention to exactly how, how you're going. And it's really hard to do any particularly complicated curvy shape here because you've got to be dialing both of these, both these tables at, at the same time. Um, so yeah, this is where having a really good CAD drawing and then really good engineering drawings of your project can be really essential. Um, and then the lathe is the, again, the manual version. So you can load, you load your piece of material. So usually like a round piece of aluminum or something in here. And then this engine will spin it really quickly. And then here you can turn these knobs to move your cutter, which is just a little blade in and out and left and right. So while this is spinning, you might go this way and this way in order to get various uh, amounts of material shaved off to make something kind of like that chest piece. So this is our digital manufacturing room where we have 3D printers and laser cutters. Um, but the machines themselves are pretty much boxes. Let's look at the cool stuff that they make. So these shelves can show off a lot of the things that 3D printing and laser cutting are really, really good at and really exceptional at, and can show off the kind of the different capabilities of the different kinds of technologies. So the um, object machine that does the, the SLS resin printing can make objects like this one. Um, because it's using resin, you can end up with really high resolution prints, smaller than a, than a piece of hair as far as the, the resolution you can get away with. And the resin can have really nice properties, especially optical properties. So this is an optically clear resin. So people have actually printed lenses um, and uh, light pipes using, using this material. The paper printers can print really large objects, objects really inexpensively. This was printed in paper. And because it's paper and it's porous, it makes great um, vacuum forming. You don't have any pockets because all the air can escape through the paper. So you can end up with uh, these kind of cool, cool, large uh, and light prints uh, that you can then use to, to build off of. So in the electronics lab, you can design, test, and build pretty much any uh, electronics projects that you might need. Um, the project might be electronic all by itself, or it might go into something else, like a wearable or in some housing that you machined. Um, so here we've got power supplies, multimeters, um, different ways to kind of diagnose and, and look at what's going on in your circuit, along with all the breadboards, Arduinos, microcontrollers, uh, sensors, resistors that you might need to, to pull a project together. 
Um, so yeah, it's a great place to, to kind of nab a, nab a component that you might need and then to build it all together and solder it. Uh, and what, if you like what you've made, we've even got the ability to, to put it all into software like one to 3D circuits or Eagle and then get uh, proper printed boards actually made. So here we are inside the Applied Research Lab. This is where we uh, do a lot of research with emerging technology, such as robots, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, and machine learning. So uh, this is one of our, our newest robots. It still doesn't have a name yet. We're uh, taking suggestions. And uh, we've got an ABB IRB6700 in the back, uh, which is doing a 3D printing with metal projects. That's where the MIG welding project I mentioned before. We have a MIG welder strapped to the robot uh, that's basically turned into a metal 3D printer. So here we get equipment like this robot. We come up with some cool projects uh, that we think are relevant for the future of how things are going to be designed and made. And we prototype out how we think uh, people in sort of factories of the future could assemble and make things. So we've done architectural projects, manufacturing projects, um, a little bit in media and entertainment, all kind of with these ways to suggest at a possible future so that we can help uh, talk to people both in our, companies, uh, in our company and uh, people outside about what we think is important for what's coming next and what, uh, what we think needs to happen today in order to enable some cooler ways of building. So keep an eye on the Adafruit blog, our YouTube channel, and all the places you expect to see our videos. There's an interview, there's a walkthrough, there's even more. So this is a series that's probably going to go on for the next 10 months. Yeah. I hope it goes on forever. Why not? Yeah. So tune in. And if there's someone amazing at a company you work, drop us a note. Yeah. You want to meet more people. Yeah. OK. We want to tell their stories. Open source hardware. That's us. We're a company that does open source hardware. As a lot of folks have seen, it's Circuit Python Bonanza. Yes. What's Let me talk on? about this. Um, so we did a blog post this week, Phil B. did, uh, like a yesterday or the day before. We're going through all of the Gemma guides. And since we released the Gemma M0, you know, two months ago, um, people are using it and having a good time. It comes with Python on it. And we wanted to give people projects and example codes so that they could build off it, because that's what we do here at Adafruit. So we're going through and we uh, uh, kind of uh, polishing and redoing a little bit of the older Gemma guides, like the the hoop earrings we did, and the, the tree topper, and um, the bracelet project. And re first off, cleaning them up a little bit if there's any broken links and stuff. But also um, putting in code for Circuit Python, and sh so basically showing people like, hey, here's how to use a Gemma M0 to do this project without using Arduino at all. So it's kind of a good experience for us to port some of this uh, NeoPixel code to Python. It also gives people a base of code, I think, that they'll use to remix because I, you know, there's a lot of projects that you know, they use our code and then they modify it. That's a common way people get started. So we have five projects up so far. Yeah. Um, we'd love to do more. And uh, if you uh, out there have ported one of our projects with Python already, uh, post up in the Discord and maybe we'll use your code as the example, give you cred. You too can be a CircuitPython helper. Yep, so we're getting there. I gotta do badges for that. We're gonna have Discord gave us permission to use their logo for a specific things, so we're going to have Discord moderator mm -hmm. badges for help. People that are just in Discord, and then maybe I can do a circuit Python one. Yeah. Okay. Blink uh, out. But wait, there's more. So we do tutorials, lots of them. 1, yeah. 1,286. Oh, well, that's cool. We're getting up to 1,300. Lucky 1,300. Okay, so we got a couple projects this week. Um, we got the day warp projector for the Nintendo Switch that was Knowing Pedro's last week 3D Hangouts project. We had the APDS sensor breakout also last week. This week was AdaBox 05 release. So this is a, uh, this kit's a different one than the others. It's uh, Pi based. We wanted to give people something other than just Arduino compatible. So we went with the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, you also get a joy bonnet, all the accessories you need to get started, and uh, some projects you can build. So check out the Adabox 005 guide to get started with your pack. And we'll have unboxing and more projects as as that happens. Don't worry, you're like, oh, there's no more projects. They come out after people get the box, so you have some time with it. And then um, we're uh, still doing our CircuitPython basics. 
Um, so wrapping those up, uh, this week we did I squared C and SPI. So yeah. the low level basics for CircuitPython interfacing. So you're like, hey, I want to talk to sensors and devices. Check out this guide. This will give you all the information you want and more. Okay. Manufacturing in New York. Every morning the sun rises. This is what our picking place to see. That's a nice sunrise. This is New York. Freedom Tower. Remember we're talking oh, about Oh, yeah, there you go. Yep. There it is. And a little bit of noise in the background on this one because it's our machines running, but this is using the stencilers. So this is a robot friend. It's conductive paste. Yes, spackle it on. And then it squeezes it away. This is excellent spackling technique. And that's how it's done. Next up. This is the squeegee bot. Oh, this is from the Pyord. Yeah, these are popular. Which yeah. made quite a Squishes it through the laser cut metal. Get those in New Jersey. Also USA. By the yeah. way, you know, we're not like, yeah, it's just you can do it. It's like it's better. It's faster we're, to get. We're doing it because it it's better and faster and cheaper. It's faster and easier for yeah. us. Yeah, they're very right. well-made stencils. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's like some people are like, oh, I get my stencils in China. And I'm like, why? It's like if there's a problem, you can't get a fix. Yeah. And this is made in New Jersey. Okay. It's super easy. This is some pick-and-place components. So these Modules, are, chips. Yeah, these are all the things that we put on the pick-and-place. Pick-and-place can do a lot. And then here's some laser cutting. I think Dano was cutting out something for a Tesla. Yeah, what's going on here? I think this was something for maybe a parking spot or a thing. This is oh, where yeah. a Tesla is, or maybe it's going to go on a Tesla. Anyways, that's our laser Unclear. cutter. Yeah. And then here's some dot star footage. Yeah, Dino's helping me, and this is the, his first uh, version of making the dot star demo. It wasn't the final one, but it's the most colorful one. And of course, for every sun rise there is a sunset this is what we see outside the other window isn't that nice yeah day's done i don't get to see the sunrises or sunset so this is as close as i get right now no well, we're in new york it's like not really an easy thing to do yeah. anyways okay and that was our manufacturing so uh no and pedro during um the hurricane there in florida we were watching closely um i had bookmarked exactly where they were and, and watching the storm um you know our thoughts go out to everyone with a hurricane hit we were also um, relieved that it, it missed. They were they're at like West Palm Beach. It was heading right for them. It would have yeah, it would have been it swung around. It would have been devastating. Um, it was devastating for some people. Yeah, which is just very unfortunate. And, and so they were documenting like their preparation and everything. So um, they did some videos. They also did a recap. So here's the first one. This is a video from a couple years ago. Still very useful. This is but the, it's re-edited. Yeah, this is the polishing of 3D printing, and then we'll do a uh, a speed up. Good tips. It's pumpkin spice latte times at Starbucks. That means it's time oh, yeah. for a speed up pumpkin print. Pumpkin time.
Okay. And don't forget to watch 3D Hangouts every Wednesday with Noah and Pedro. You can see their latest that just got posted today on YouTube. Yay. Later, it's new product time. New, new, new. Okay. New, 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 new. Don't forget, everyone, we have our new product newsletter. You can get this every single week. If you can't keep up with our new products, this is a way to do it. All right, first up. Okay, we got a whole shipment of stuff from Pimeroni, which is great. They've released a couple products in the last few months, and now we have them. This is the Pico Hat Hacker. It's a little add-on for your Raspberry Pi that kind of just doubles the um, GPIO. And what's nice is that you know you can solder this in. Uh, directly into the pins and then you can have like an extension so it's good for you know if you're um, making your own custom hats or hacking something and you just want to have a duplicate output so it goes with your pi zero pi a plus b plus etc okay next up oh this is the uh, super awesome unicorn hat hd so this is an upgrade from uh their neopixel based hat instead of having 256 neopixels, which actually would be way too expensive to do, because uh, each pixel has its own controller. They have one big controller in the back that's a lot like those uh, multiplex matrices that we uh, sell in the shop, except um, there's a little helper chip that uh, manages it for you, that kind of does the multiplexing for you. So you don't have to even uh, run it like an RGB matrix where you have to like send data constantly. And uh, I got the demo here. So you can see the back, it has all the driver chips. It comes with a little diffuser. Um, and it's all assembled, so you just plug it right in. And then this is it with the diffuser, so it looks that's really great. nice. And then if I take it, it's that's cool. cool to kind of Oh, hack. neat. Whoa, diffusing. This is running like a, a demo with um, like a plasma thing, but it's 256 pixels, so that's a lot. It's using like um, two millimeter by two millimeter LEDs. And then just like plugs in very nicely and works with your favorite Raspberry Pi. It works with any Pi. B plus, A plus, and it's definitely like if you want the high quality RGB matrix display, um, it's a really good deal, and it's very easy to use. Man, I'm having a major case of deja vu. Have we ever done this before? New products, we do it every week. This the was there a product that was that was like this? Dude, we have like eight thousand products like this. Are you kidding? All we have is like. I, I, I told you the story that a dream I had. So um, a, f a friend at the company sent the Cassini probe stuff. Like it's gonna crash into Saturn, and yeah. I did. And I had a dream I was a space probe, but I was AI and I became self-aware, and I told Earth I didn't want to crash and die into the planet. And I saw, and I was, I saw my sensors saw images like that. Oh really? And I was trying to yeah. yeah. And this was, is like the f when this you is lift it up. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. I had a little bit of a weird moment, but yeah, I was trying to send the sensor information before I woke up too. I thought my phone could get it. Yeah. Mm, super weird dream. This is also a common plasma demo that we run on. I mean, also you could be having deja vu from your previous life as a Cassini probe. Yeah. Okay. But it's also a common thing that we run on because it's a it's a nice demo. So, anyways, uh, high density, the most pixels. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah, I just got I just got triggered. I'm like, I saw that in my space probe dream. Okay. And it's got a nice diffuser. Cool. Does help. Was that my outside voice? Yeah, it was. Okay, next up. On off shim. So this is a little add-on, kind of like our little like Pi UART and Pi OLED. Um, this one uses, you know, actually I don't know exactly the detail of how it works because I, I couldn't quite figure it out, but um, it seems like it uses two GPIO, uh, one as an input, one as an output, to signal when to turn off the Pi from a button. So you use that button to turn it off and turn it back on. And I guess there's some like flip flop or latch um, in the circuitry that allows it to do it. And so this lets you have a, a full power on off uh, control for your Raspberry Pi. So it also works with any Pi and it has a little script that you run and it sort of manages the on off stuff for you. Okay, next up. And this is a third little add on. So this is another little shim. It's a little thing that can go um, in between um, your Raspberry Pi hats, or you can just use it as is. It just gives you five buttons, and it has a little dot star LED. Um, it uses a um, I squared C expander, so you don't actually have to like control each pin separately. Um, it'll go through this expander, so it's, you know it manages your pull-ups for you and everything. And I've got assembled versions of all these as well. If you want to, they're not as glowy. They're still pretty cool. So this is the button shim. So it yeah, that plugs wasn't in my dream. In. This that button, was. yeah. Sorry. It's all right. Maybe. Maybe you foresaw that foretelling. So yeah, this can plug in like this, and uh, you get some buttons. Hold on, let me focus in. 
So you get some buttons, which is really nice. And then this version is just kind of like the duplicator breakout. So you can um, put in headers and solder it, or you can, um, I guess you could probably do it like this too. And it fits right over. You do have to solder it. I mean, it, it does fit like this, but it's not like a tight fit. So if you want to actually duplicate the connections, you would uh, either solder these in directly or use a connector. And then the on-off shim is not as exciting looking. So that's that's what I'm going to show on the Okay, that's it. Yeah. All right, we're along. Here what pie, this is a Pi Day. So this is the AIY kit. So this was a Google, it's like... Um, audio assistant AI it yourself kit that was given out the latest magpie not the, this one but maybe the previous one was we actually got one the little box uh, magpie kit and um, you can basically make your own Google home assistant and it uses a Raspi 3 and so this kit which we will be stocking soon uh, comes with everything you need except I think a Raspberry Pi it comes with like you know the button and uh, the box and um, you fold it together and then if you want to unfold it. But it's kind of neat because it's kind of like you can just DIY your own assistant. So, wow, there you go. So it's wow. got the voice um, stuff, a uh, big speaker, uh, the voice hat control, and um, this button. So you can even set instructions on it. So this is a kind of a, a fun project that you can you know, use your Raspberry Pi 3 and then build a little home assistant with. Apparently it works quite well. Uh, there's these holes here for the uh, microphones. So it does a little bit of directional control and then the speaker is nice and big. It's kind of got that like a rustic look to it. Um, so we will have this in the shop uh, shortly. I don't know the exact date, but sign up if you'd like to pick one up. We will have them soon. Okay, there's more. We also have a pack. This is for a Hackster workshop with Microsoft. Uh, if you're in that workshop, you'll want this. If you're not, you can still pick it up, but it's not as useful. Next up. Uh, we got, yeah, we squeezed in one more uh, Raspberry Pi project uh, from Pimeroni. This is the Octocam. Everything from Pimeroni is delightful. Look how it's delightful so cute. this is. It's kind of, it's a little octopus. Yeah, you want to show, I'll show it in the overhead. It's actually yeah. easier to show in the overhead. Um, it's a little octopus uh, plastic piece. Yeah, it looks like it's, oh, it's laser etched. So it's plastic that's yeah, it's in laser etched. And then you get these suction cups because it's it's an octopus. And inside there's a Pi Zero W and it has, you can bring your own SD card. Uh, you put this together and you get also a little um, camera which you can kind of see folded over a little spy camera. And um, when you put it together, you can kind of stick this to um, your window uh, on the inside or on the outside, whatever, and it will uh, video. You can use time lapse, motion detection, webcam, um, desktop cam. You know, you don't have to stick to a window. You can just put it on a table as well. But uh, I like the suckers because it's kind of neat. You can, if you want to do a wildlife or outdoor cam or backyard cam, um, this is a fun and easy project. It comes with a Pi Zero W, which is cool, but you do need to include. Um, your own SD card. So it's almost complete, complete. And then a power supply. But if, it's pretty complete. If all the polar ice caps melt and it's just water planet, I hope the octopuses get a chance, the octopi get a chance to rule the planet. I think they do pretty good. You could say octopuses. Yeah? You don't say octopi. I think they do a pretty good job. Because yeah. they got like a bunch of arms and they could, they could use tools. They could, eventually if there's land, they could learn how to they walk. They can squeeze through things. They can squeeze through things. I yeah. think they do pretty good. Okay, so this is quite sticky. Watch out for this. This is very sticky. Yay, octopus. I don't think it's okay to eat them, maybe. Don't, yeah. okay. They're not that tasty anymore. All right, the star of this show okay. tonight, um, Lady Ada. More blinky. It goes well Besides with, you. Yeah. Is a feather wing. Yeah, I get some more feather, feather wings done. Feather wing party. I know. We had some, well, there's a couple of feather wings I want to get going, so this is good. It's a good pair up for the um, HD uh unicorn hat so if you like that unicorn hat maybe this is also a pretty good deal this is for the feather wings this is for the feathers works with all feathers uh, you can see the little demo that we did it's full rainbow color pixels you get 72 so it's a pretty good number and it's also very high density so it's I made them as high density as possible so it's 6 by 12 so you get a lot of RG pixels um, and we have a little font. This is a five pixel font that you can use so you can have it scroll text if you like or have a little graph. It's just enough pixels that you can kind of do stuff with it. And um, 
It's pretty easy to use. Uh, you solder it on the headers and you can plug it into your feather wing doubler or whatnot. And then um, on the back, you have two pins used for clocking data. You can use any two pins and then there's jumpers if you want to select other pins. Um, but you know, the default ones I picked don't really collide with anything. So I think it's good to stick with those. And then you've got the blinky. It's kind of nice, everyone loves the blinky. So dot stars, and the, these are the new uh, super tiny two millimeter by two millimeter dot star. So that's why you get the high pitch display. And then of course you don't have to use it with the feather wing. You can use it with other things, but it's kind of designed to work well with those. Okay. And with that is new products. Thanks everybody new products team. Thank you lady. I think everybody hope make this happen another week in a row. Okay. Don't forget yeah. walk through. Just the code for tonight, 10% off a native fruit store. Anything that you saw in stock could will probably be around tomorrow ish whenever I get a chance to turn it off. So, uh, you can still save, but yeah. try to save now. Okay, save Lady now. Ada. Um, oh my God, it's stuck. Yeah, we're gonna do some questions. So folks in Discord, go ahead and start asking your questions. Um, we'll pop into the chat here live, which is a lot of fun. And I'll try to hop around to the other chats. Let's see what's in the live broadcast chat, Lady Ada. Okay, Adafruit, Lamar mentioned the temp sensor on the SM, uh, SAMD was accurate within a degree. Is that centigrade or Fahrenheit? Centigrade. I mean, I, it's not guaranteed, but it seemed to be Compared to the NRF51, which I was trying out, which is like four degrees accuracy, uh, sorry, four degree precision and 10 degrees accuracy, this is within a degree or two, it okay. seems. What is Data for doing at Makefair? Glad you asked. So JP, John Park will be at Maker Fair. Tony DeCola, some of the Adafruit team members, some surprises. Here's what you can do. You can go to the events channel in Discord and say, hey, I'm gonna be at Maker Fair in New York. Add me to the Adafruit Discord Maker Fair channel. That way everyone can get together chat it's a real time chat which is always okay. hard because twitter twitter is, is useless it's not good it's for complaining now so you can use this and hang out with people and you don't have to worry about all the terrible things on twitter trying to use it as a way to do stuff okay lady ada do you design all the boards nearly all the boards okay. i designed this one um dean is helping us uh he's joined recently and he's helping me design a bunch of boards k town designs a bunch of boards so the apds 9660 from last week. I designed that one, but the CCS 811 from a couple weeks ago, um, that was Dean's design. Um, Cape Town did the NR52 Feather. So it's it's a team effort. Okay. Uh, next one. Um, we do have a video of you designing boards. Just check out Desk of Lady. There's Dude, tons of all those. there is is yeah. me designing boards. Got another one. Um, well, this isn't Scott Tanute, but um, we have been using Mew. Um, or Moo, and you will be able to see the CircuitPython boards. Just wait, it's coming. There's already stuff on GitHub you can see. Um, I think you can probably use it on your own right now. We're, it's yeah. coming, it's if coming, you it's look, coming. If you look in Moo, you can see there's pull requests. Um, we're waiting for the next release of 1.0 and it should be in there. Okay, next up. Uh, well, the links for the Trinket M0 and Circuit Playground Express data sheets, uh, will they not be added on their product pages? Um, well, there's not really data sheets. I mean, it, the chip, there's a product page yeah. for the chip. Check but out the GitHub with everything we have. Yeah. Um, can you change the address in the new feather wing to use two and a triple, tripler with one feather? Uh, yes, you can. You would cut the traces and just run little jumper wires, but yeah, you can, you can run up to eight. I mean, there'd be a lot, okay. but you can do it. Do you think CircuitPython will work? to code a clock or would an Arduino be better said? Oh, you can do that now. We you made, do, you we, made a we, watch. I made a watch. You made a Python watch. You can so do that. yeah, we have real time clocks that are um, supported. We have two, two or three different real time clocks supported and we have the seven segment displays and OLED displays. Okay, can you use an Arduino to display a web page? Not, Not well. really. I would say Raspberry Pi is more suited for that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, I mean like anything that has like HDMI is like kind yeah, of. Yeah, websites are see, pretty complicated If you see now. HDMI, Web pages might be for you. Mm. Okay. Uh, what's the URL for John Parks broadcast? Just go to youtube.com forward slash Adafruit forward slash live tomorrow. Um, are there any phone freaking shenanigans planned or is the phone in the background? Oh, no, there's absolutely phone freaking shenanigans. Oh, so we're going to people call it in. Yeah. Well, there's also, um, we have citizen engineer we're getting, we're doing. Um, we like phone shenanigans. Um, if we weren't running an Adafruit and doing all this stuff, I would so be doing phone shenanigans like right now. Yeah, you would totally be like, you had a red box here. Yeah, so. I got in a little trouble for some phone shenanigans. I don't want to really talk about it. Okay, that's it for questions tonight, Lady Anna. Oh, hope, uh, want to make your favorite surprises you two are in. Yeah, maybe. We're, uh, we're avatars. This is all computer generated. Okay. Uh, I just put my hand straight through you. 
Yeah, let's give away something, Lady Ada. Trivia time. Trivia time. Okay, rules are you can't win if you've won something before. Only one winner per my lifetime. The prize is going to be one of these beautiful dot star feather wings because a lot of people have feathers, and, you know, this is kind of cool. You can make a little rainbow name badge. Maybe have yeah. a flag. I don't know. Make something beautiful and cool. I guess I got to say in your rule because it happened. If you don't claim your prize after, like, a couple months, I'm going to give it away to someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Please okay. claim your prize within two days. Can we say two business days? Yeah. But the sooner the better. The sooner the better. Because that's a little hard because it's like I sit, I sit on my desk forever and then it's like, what are you doing with this, Phil? And I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. we don't even remember who, what, or why. So, yes, please please claim. All right. So, all you got to do is uh, call the phone number when it appears. I'm going to ask you your name, where you're calling from, and a project that you're working on or you want to work on. And then you'll win the prize. First caller wins. But you have to answer those three questions. The so, call lines are open. Remember who you are and where you're calling from. It's kind of the most important ones. Also, we need that to identify you so we can send you the thing. Yeah. Let's call this number. Numbers. That's the phone number. I'm a bit stab. Call it. Oh. Ooh. Okay, lady. I thought that phone was a prop, Phil. It's not a prop. All right, ready? Yeah, we're ready. Hello, and welcome to Ask Engineer. You are the fabulous winner. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Okay, well, call again. Sorry, call again. So I got scared. Okay. That happens sometimes. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the wrong number. It's okay. If you have one, call. Call again. We're here all week. Ooh. Okay, this time. Yeah, this is it. Let's watch out. Okay. okay. Hello, and thank you for calling Ask Engineer. You're a fabulous winner. Congratulations. Hello? Hello? Ooh, two hang-ups. Okay, we're going to try one more time, and then we're just going to move on. Because we're going to do this next week. That's the phone number. Call. Where do they hang up? Say who you are, where you're from, what you want to build. Oh, yeah. Also, mute your stream while you talk on the phone. Yeah, yeah, that good helps. Good tip. That's a good tip. All right. Bum, 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 Unless there's a phone call on, like, a few seconds, I'm going to stop it, and we'll just give away stuff next week. Yeah, you might get voicemail if too many people call, too. Happens. This is Phone lines weren't meant for this, apparently. All right, Lady Ada. Guess what? We'll do the giveaway next week. Wah, Okay. All right, Lady Ada. That's pretty much the show. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, you can still leave a nice voicemail. I'll tell you what, leave a nice voicemail. Call, leave a nice voicemail. Yay. It's yeah. all good. We've been doing this for like eight years. Some yeah. Days so here's good. one thing that I might need to figure out. So this isn't really, so this is like a voice over IP thing. And I contacted the company that does all this stuff, and they didn't really give me a good answer of what happens when like 60 people call at a time. It just wasn't made for that. They didn't expect it. They're like, yeah. So I might have to get like a switchboard. And it's just, an, you know, I might figure something else out. We have options. We got options. Uh, without giving away our setup, we have options. I got options. Okay. So don't forget, you can all still win by using the discount code on checkout. 10% off a new first store. Use it. Supports us. Open source hardware company. And with that is Ask an Engineer. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. We're here next week. We'll have a bunch of Maker Faire stuff going on. Um, we have some uh, remote folks visiting, some visitors. Uh, there'll probably be lots of random videos that I'm just going to go with. So just stay tuned. Hit the Discord if you're going to be at Maker Faire or any of the events that uh, we're at. Seattle Maker Faire, Open Hardware Summit, Maker Faire New York. Just go to the Discord channel. Hit events. Say you want to be added to that event. Make sure you're going. You're not going to be weird and just be in the channel for no reason. Um, and then... Uh, we can probably meet up. Yeah. There'll be meetups and stuff. It'll be fun. Okay. We have talks also and stuff. That's right. Okay. Here's a picture of Moss with the cat. Meow. Meow. And here's your moment of Zener. Good night. Hi, everybody. Woo!